My name is Victoria and I work with a Taos, New Mexico based nonprofit called Rivers and Birds and we are dedicated to environmental education and conservation. So normally at this time of year, we would be out exploring, hiking, rafting, and learning on our local public lands with kids from local elementary schools. So maybe like some of you guys. But as you can see, it's just me here today. So we hope to get back to our normally scheduled programming very, very soon. But in the meantime, there is still so much we can learn about the natural world together, even though we're apart. So I know we've all heard a ton about social distancing lately. And for most of us, that means that we are staying home and trying to stay at least six feet away from each other. This really means that we can't see much of our other human friends. But if you pay really close attention, you might get to know some new friends who have a ton of practice keeping a safe distance away from us. Birds! So birds are around us almost constantly, even if we don't necessarily realize it. And in fact, I am willing to bet a lot of money that if you were to go outside or even just look out your window for just five minutes, you would see or hear at the very, very least one bird, if not many more than that. You know what? I dare you to try it right now. Pause this video, go take five minutes to see how many feathered friends you can see or hear in that five minutes. And then when you come back, we will talk about why some of those birds you saw and heard are so, so cool. Okay, are you ready? Get set, go! And we're back. Birds like the ones you guys just saw and heard are part of what we call the web of life. In the web of life, all living things on earth are connected, like the strands of a spider web, from plants to insects to animals, and of course, humans, which are animals as well. All living things in this web affect one another and are affected by everything else in that web. Of course, birds are a vital part of the web of life. And so today we're going to talk about just a few of the ways that birds impact the creatures and the world around them in a positive way. So here we go. Number one. Birds serve as an important food source for many other creatures in the web of life. Animals like coyotes, weasels, snakes, other birds, and of course many humans rely on birds for a portion of their diet. For example, many of us humans eat chicken or turkey or eggs on a really regular basis. And of course, in nature, many animals rely on birds to stay alive. And they do this by eating either the birds or their eggs. All right, number two, many birds are predators themselves. So this means that many birds hunt and eat other creatures to stay alive. And by doing this, not only do they fill their own bellies, but they also help keep the populations of those creatures that they eat from getting too large and then having a harmful impact on the environment around them. So for example, birds like hawks, which we see a lot of around here, eat rodents like mice or voles or even prairie dogs. And this helps keep the rodent population from getting too large. And many other birds, like the red-winged blackbird, which you might have been hearing behind me, there's one right now, they don't eat some of those bigger things like rodents, but they do eat a ton of insects. And by eating all of those insects, they help those populations stay balanced as well. Number three, birds plant seeds. Many birds eat the seeds of plants, and when those seeds pass through their digestive tract, some of them end up coming out with their digestive waste. Usually that means poop land on the ground and that seed can start to grow into a new plant in a new place. So this helps plant populations thrive and find new suitable habitat to grow in. So some birds even go a little bit further than that and they actually bury seeds in the ground, in the earth, as part of their process of harvesting and storing away seeds to eat later in the year. A good example of this is the jay family. 
So birds like pinon jays, scrub jays, and Clark's nutcrackers are birds that will pick pine nuts with their beaks fly with a big old mouthful of the pine nuts to another location and actually use their beaks to poke the seeds into the ground. And they do this so that later in the year they can come back and find where they buried those seeds and have food when they might otherwise not be able to find their normal food source. But they can never find all of the hundreds of seeds that they bury each year. So many of those forgotten pine nuts will then sprout and maybe even eventually grow into a new beautiful pine tree. Number four, birds are pollinators. So some birds, like hummingbirds, drink nectar from flowers. And so they put their little beak into the flower to get their nice little drink, but as they do that, some pollen dust will get onto their beak. If you've seen that kind of yellow powdery uh, stuff that might come off on your fingers that comes from flowers, that's what pollen dust is. So that gets on the birds and as they go from flower to flower to get their food, some of the pollen dust from the previous flower will fall off in the next one. And that's a process called pollination. And for many plants, this act of pollination is essential for them to be able to produce fruit and to produce new plants. Number five, birds are an important part of nature's cleanup crew. Certain birds like turkey vultures or even magpies and crows all eat carrion, which is just a fancy way of saying they eat dead animals. By getting rid of these dead and decomposing animals, they help to limit the spread of disease that might arise from the rotting carcasses. Doing that helps keep uh, not only humans, but other animals healthy as well and disease free. There are countless ways that birds benefit us and our environment. I'll leave you with just one more today. And bear with me because this might sound a little bit cheesy at first, but birds inspire us. Living around these beautiful, diverse, and just fascinating creatures has inspired countless people over thousands and thousands of years to study nature and science, uh, to create beautiful works of art, and has even inspired some of our most famous inventions like the airplane. So. I hope that you're able to gain some inspiration from your new feathered friends. And if you'd like to learn more about birds, we have games and lots of other really fun resources, as well as a tutorial for how to draw a bluebird that we will link both in the description of this video and on our website at riversandbirds.org. So thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you back here very soon. Bye.